Bring in now uh, two colleagues of Congressman Lewis, fellow Georgia Congressman Hank Johnson, as well as Congresswoman Terry Sewell of Alabama. Good to see both of you on this very heavy day. Good to see you. So, Congresswoman you uh, Sewell, let me, let me hear from you first, if you don't mind, um, you know, about your thoughts and your memories of Congressman Lewis. I remember seeing you during the 50th anniversary of the uh, Bloody Sunday uh, with Congressman Lewis there. What? What are the thoughts that you want to have today for him? You know, uh, we lost a, a moral compass in losing John. I, I want to remember all of the wonderful opportunities I had to sit at his feet and to learn from John. Uh, John um, represents so much to my district, Alabama's 7th district. It includes Birmingham and Selma, my hometown. Um, he held such a special place. Uh, Selma holds a special place for him, but we love John Lewis in my district. Uh, he's an Alabama native son, and we are just so uh, blessed to call him one of our own. We want to make sure that we remember his life's work because it's still left undone. John had an indomitable spirit. It was infectious, his love of America, his love of people, and the fact that he stands as a living, living testament to um, the triumph of love over hate is something that's so important. Um, I hope that all of us will rededicate ourselves to his life's work and try to restore the full mm -hmm. protections of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. That to me would be an honor and a tribute mm -hmm. to a man and a life well lived. Yeah, and Congresswoman Sorrell, I mean, how remarkable you would grow up in Selma and be witness to, I mean, seeing Congressman Lewis who would make his pilgrimage to Selma and then you would grow up to become a colleague working alongside him as a member of Congress, you know, representing your district. I mean, that is heavy and that's big. So, you know, how were you able to, I guess, em embrace that, um, you know, live up to that and 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 work alongside him, somebody you admired for so long. Yes, you know, Frederica, you're trying to make me cry again. I'm not. I've had my tears too. I mean, I, I, it's hard. It's hard not to reflect on him. Everyone's had personal experiences. If if you've been so lucky to have that and not yeah. tear up, but but go ahead. And if you have to tear up, it's okay. <laughs> You know, as you said, I, I not only have the honor of representing Selma and to being Alabama's first black congresswoman, but I grew up in Selma. I'm a daughter of Brown Chapel AME Church and having grown up and watched uh, so many foot soldiers come back like John Lewis time and time again to Brown Chapel to relive and reenact and remember and more importantly, be renewed uh, and rededicate themselves to the fight for equality. Um, he was a giant among giants. We lost uh, C.T. Vivian as well uh, mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you know, uh, for me to be able to grow up uh, in Selma and to be able to um, then become the member of Congress and get to know John mm -hmm. Lewis, I used to sing in the choir and pass out uh, the brochures as an usher uh, at Brown Chapel and then mm. to um, mm. then become a member of Congress. You know, you're not often able to thank your living legend. And I got a chance not only to thank John time and time again, but to roll up my sleeves and, and, and hopefully try to honor him and the legacy of those foot soldiers by trying to, uh, you know, renew and restore the Voting Rights Act of 1965. I carry the seminal piece of legislation, H.R. 4, the Voting Rights Advancement Act, and we finally passed it in December. It sits languishing on the desk of Mitch McConnell. But you know what? This is a, a time for us to reflect on the life, a life well led by John Lewis. And we need to be rededicate ourselves to the to the causes for which he fought. Um, I think mm -hmm. that as we think about this moment in American history, uh, I hope that we are all full of, uh, of the legacy that is John. He embodied and walked the walk and talked the talk. I'm just honored and blessed uh, to have an opportunity to not only stand on his shoulders, but also to be renewed by his strength each and every day to fight for those causes. That to me is the best way that we can relive uh, and extend his wonderful legacy. Yeah, I, I, I can hear it. You are so proud of him, but I assure you, I'm, I'm sure that the feeling is mutual. He's very, he's been very proud of you too. So Congressman Johnson, you know, as a fellow member of the Georgia delegation, I, I, you know, your thoughts on both 
Congressman Lewis and C.T. Vivian, who is a resident here of Atlanta, and I know you got a chance to interact with him quite a bit as well. I mean, this is this is a double whammy, you know, for so many of us. Yeah, it really is. And then when you consider that uh, Reverend Dr. Joseph Lowry died uh, just uh, a few months ago, March 27th, I believe, uh, we've lost three civil rights icons uh, during this COVID, COVID epidemic. And um, it's been um, really uh, sad uh, the last 24 hours to think that John Lewis uh, will, will not be among us when we come back to reconvene uh, under normal circumstances in Congress. Uh, he's just been such a powerful voice for what is right, what is just, what is truth. Uh, he stood he, he stood on high moral ground and he lifted everyone else who was around him up to where he was, not in a arrogant and high-handed way, but just in being a humble servant of the people. And uh, he never lost track of why he was on this earth. He was put on this earth for a reason. And his reason uh, for being here was to fight for human rights, not only civil rights for black folks, but human rights for everyone. He had so much love in his heart. I mean, and to to be with him just walking through an airport, and I don't care where that airport might be, but you walk through an airport with John Lewis or to any other public uh, location, and to see him interact with the hordes of people who would come up, people wanting autographs, people wanting uh, pictures, people just wanting to have a few words, wanting to take some time to talk to John Lewis. And he would always give everybody every inch of time that they demanded of him. It was kind of excruciating to watch him. And I know that sometimes he was tired and didn't really, you know, want to do it. But he would always smile and engage people. The people actually lifted him up and he never forgot where he came from. But he never did consider himself to be high and mighty. I mean, there was, if you went someplace with him, he didn't expect for you to treat him differently or as if he were a high public official, or something like that. He just wanted to be treated just like a regular uh, individual human being. That's what he, that's what he was. That's what he exemplified. That's the example that he set. And it's one that I will always have front and center on my mind uh, as I move forward. And in fact, I would I I have often said that I would not even be a congressman had it not been for uh, John Lewis. And just a couple of days before the uh, 2006 election, which was my first election, uh, John Lewis was quoted as saying that I think Hank Johnson will make a, a, a excellent representative. And uh, he did not endorse me in that race. It was against an, a sitting incumbent. Mm -hmm. But just those words at that particular time, I think, were enough to propel me across the finish line. And I've been honored to serve with him for the last 14 years and to get to know him and to get to serve him, I've tried to serve him, to help him carry out his legacy. And so I'm, I'm proud of the time that we spent together and mm. I'll always hold it dear to my heart. Mm, beautiful memories, thank you so much uh, for sharing your thoughts and your heart uh, with all of us. Congressman Hank Johnson, Congresswoman Terry Sewell, really appreciate you both, thank you. Thank you. We'll have so much more on the life and the legacy of Congressman John Lewis in a moment. But first, the congressman, in his own words, at the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. All of us, it doesn't matter whether we're black or white, Latino, Asian American or Native American. It doesn't matter whether we're straight or gay. We're one people. We're one family. We're one house. We all live in the same house.